right, well, please turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 2. As we prepare to take the Lord's table this morning, I'm going to read starting in verse 1. I invite you to read along. As we reflect on what Christ has done for us in the forgiveness of our sins. Paul says in Ephesians 2, starting in verse 1, he says, And you are dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, too, we, too, all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even if we were dead in our transgressions and sins, excuse me, dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Each week we take time to celebrate the Lord's table. We take bread and juice and we remember Christ's body that was crushed, and we remember his blood that was spilt, that was shed and poured out. And for those who believe these realities of Christ's body being broken and his blood being spilled are both tragic and sobering and eternity-altering, joy-giving, life-producing. As we see that because of Christ's blood, we are reconciled to God. We are Evidences of his grace. Because there's no way that we could right the wrong that we did. See, we were dead in our transgressions. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were enemies of God. And he rescued us. The only explanation, the only satisfactory sacrifice that could be made was the perfect, innocent Jesus. He's the only way that we could be raised up. We could never be raised up independently. Rather, we are raised up with him. And that's the work of God in the gospel through his son, Jesus. And so while the thought of our Savior being crushed and his blood being spilled is tragic and devastating and, and agonizing to think about the reality that the innocent Son of God would experience such things, we also find joy. We find peace and we find comfort and we find hope. And as we gather together, we have the opportunity each week to remember these things and really to steady our hearts, to stay our hearts on these wonderful realities of who God is and what he has done through his son, Jesus, because this reality in the gospel, it changes everything for us. It casts a, a glorious shadow on our lives that helps us see God's faithfulness in each and every circumstance we find ourselves in. God is so kind to bring us this kind of favor, to give to us this rich grace. So as we remember this morning Christ's body and his blood, we must remember that this salvation that we have, it is solely based on the work of Christ. It's nothing we've done, and God designed it that way so that no man could boast all we have to boast in is Christ himself and what he has accomplished. 
If you are in Christ, if you are a Christian, then we'd like to invite you to share with us this morning and taking the bread and the cup and remembering Christ's body that was broken and his blood that was shed. If you're not a believer, this is the time for the Christian to remember Christ. And so we would simply ask that you wouldn't take the bread in the cup because the things that these signify, that they point to, right? The bread signifies Christ's body. The juice signifies Christ's blood. These, these um, reflections, these, the bread and the cup, they, they don't mean anything for you yet. So we'd ask for you to let them pass by, but we would also plead with you to talk to one of us. We would love to talk with you more about Christ and what he has done in the gospel for all those who would believe. Don't leave without talking to someone about this reality. The men are going to come and serve us, and as you take the bread and the cup and have them, you can take them on your own, and then we'll pray together in just a few moments. Men, please come and serve us.